I'm Alex from iFixit, and today I'm going to show you how to replace a display on an Apple Watch Series 2. For this repair, you'll need an eye opener, a curved razor blade, tweezers, a wide triple zero screwdriver, and a couple of opening picks. I also recommend getting a force touch gasket. It's inexpensive and it's real easy to break, so it's good to have it on hand. And remember, when it's time to do your repair, make sure to follow the step-by-step -step guide on iFixit.com. And we're going to start this repair by removing these two bands so we have better access to the watch itself. To release the band, press the band release button and slide it out of its groove. Now that we have the bands off, we get our first real job, which is to loosen the adhesive so we can take the display off. This adhesive is really tenacious to help with the waterproofing, so it usually takes quite a bit of heat, but we don't want to burn the LCD. So we're using our eye opener to get it to about 160 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we're gonna to try to open it with our curved razor blade so that we don't damage the metal very much. When I'm opening the Apple Watch, I always wanna make sure I'm coming in at the safest possible side. And for the Series 2, that's gonna be the side across from the digital crown. That's because the display cables come in from the bottom of the display and the crown also holds a little bit of the antenna. So I'm gonna stay as far away from those components as I can and open from the other side. So you'll notice that I use a metal tool, which some people prefer not to use, so that's to not scratch the watch. But as this watch has never been opened, it's a little bit harder for me to get in. Now that we have this watch open, we're gonna switch away from the sharp blade, and then we're gonna switch to the pick so that we minimize our chance of cutting the gasket. We really don't wanna be lifting any of the black gasket or cutting through and exposing any of the copper. I'm gonna be moving my pick all the way around the display, making sure to cut all the adhesive without disconnecting the cables. All right, so now that we have the display completely off of the adhesive, we need to disconnect the display. And the first step to doing that is removing this black adhesive that's covering all of our connections. With the adhesive out of the way, we now see our three ZIF connectors that we're going to open and then remove the display. So now that we have the display off, the thing we want to make sure is that we didn't damage our gasket. The things to look out for, as seen here, are exposed copper or cut all the way through, exposing the casing underneath. So in this watch, we're probably going to have to replace our gasket. The first thing we're going to have to do is take this bracket off, which is held in with this tiny little tri-wing. So we're going to get our driver in there and remove this screw. With the screw gone, we can get these tweezers in there and remove this bracket, exposing our first set of connections. So our first connector that we're removing is this battery connection. Due to tight tolerances and because these pointed tweezers are ESD safe, I'm going to go ahead and use these instead of a plastic pick. With that connection out of the way, we can lift this board that's connected to the battery, and now we can see further connections deeper down, including the force touch gasket. Now that the gasket is disconnected, we have to get it off of our casing. So I'm gonna use this pick and slide it under our connections and wiggle it down, making sure to get underneath the adhesive. Once I have it started, since it stays as one unit, I'm just gonna use these blunt tweezers to lift it off of the casing. Before putting your new gasket on, it really pays off to clean the surface as much as possible. So I'm gonna use this Q-tip and a little bit of alcohol to make sure that all of that adhesive is off of the case. Now that your case is ready for reapplication, we're gonna take our new gasket and just remove the rear adhesive cover. We're going to reapply this really carefully, making sure you're getting into all the edges and seating it as best as we can. This is really important to make sure that our 3D touch and just our touch work once the screen is back on. All that's left now is to reassemble your Apple Watch. I recommend reconnecting your new display and making sure that display and touch work before actually removing the top adhesive and sealing it down. Well, that's it for this repair. Make sure you subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all the latest iFixit teardowns and repair videos, and I'll see you next time.